Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about auxiliary views. The objective of the lecture is to understand how to generate views that show inclined and oblique surfaces in true shape in multi-view drawings. This is going to help us understand the manipulation of three-dimensional objects using successive 90 degree rotations so that we can prep for solid modeling. Just a brief outline, we're going to talk about the fold method, uh, primary and auxiliary views, and then what secondary views are. This is slightly a review. Uh, we've talked about principal planes, the horizontal plane, the frontal, and the profile plane. The definition of an auxiliary view is an orthographic view that is projected onto a plane that is not parallel to any of the principal planes. So the purpose is to show the true face or true shape of a detail that does not lie on the principal planes. What this means is we would get the true length of a line, the point of view of a line, a true edge, or a true size of an object. For example, this triangle right here would not lie on the principal plane on any of the principal planes, top, front, or right side. And so we would construct a view that would allow us to see exactly what the dimensions of this, or rather if there were any details, what those dimensions would be in, in this 3D object. The fold method is a method by which we can attain an auxiliary view. We can have a fold line, which is a hinge in essence, if we have our glass box. And this may be replaced between the two adjacent views to aid the construction and interpretation of the multi-view drawings. A full line represents the projection plane for the adjacent view. For example, this fold line right here can represent the right side view. A line appears true length if it lies in a plane parallel to the projection plane. So for example, line AB in my object is true length in my right side view. A line which is not parallel to the projection plane appears foreshortened. In this case, if I'm looking at line AD, which is this incline right here, you'll notice that on the right side view, it appears much shorter than it is. That's what we mean by foreshortened. A line which is perpendicular to the projection plane appears as a point. Let's go back to line AB. A, You'll notice that line AB in my front view is this point right here. Surfaces. A surface appears its true shape, meaning undistorted, if it is parallel to the projection plane. So for example, in this image, we have this front surface right here undistorted. Since we have an incline, the only way that we can see its true shape is by looking at an auxiliary view. A surface appears as an edge parallel to the fold line in all views adjacent to the true shape of the surface. So this surface, once again, can be seen as an edge right here in my front view. If any line on the surface appears as a point, then the surface will ap appear as an edge. This goes back to the idea that lines are points whenever we see them from a specific angle. A surface which does not appear as an edge in any of the principal views is called an oblique surface. Another method of attaining auxiliary views is the reference plane method. The reference plane method of creating an auxiliary view is simply a variation of the fold line method. The reference plane method is a technique that locates a plane relative to the object instead of suspending the object on a box. The reference plane can be positioned anywhere relative to that object. A reference line is then generated. This can be seen in this image. This is my reference plane, and then we have our reference lines here. 
The reference line then is used to make measurements that are transferred from the top view to the auxiliary view. The advantage of the reference plane method is that if it's positioned correctly, it can result in fewer measurements. Auxiliary classifications. When we're looking at the front in the top view, we can have what we call a primary auxiliary view. This is a single view projected from one of the six principal views. A secondary auxiliary view is a single view projected from a primary auxiliary view. And likewise, a tertiary auxiliary view is a single view projected from a secondary or another tertiary auxiliary view. Constructing an auxiliary view. The first step is to identify what we call the line of sight. Notice that we have an object. We can see a horizontal view. We can see our plane view and our front view. So we've identified the line of sight. Once we've done that, we can do the same and then multi-view drawing. The idea is to get that true shape A, B, C, D. Step two is to create your fold lines equal distance from each of the views. This can be done by taking measurements. Step three is to project the length of the inclined surface from the front view using construction lines. Step four is to transfer the depth of an inclined surface from the top view. Step five is to draw a line perpendicular to the projectors. Notice that we follow these steps whenever we're doing any views in our multi-view drawings. The last step, step six, is to complete the auxiliary view details. In this case, we would bind everything together to get our true size for A, B, C, D. Some helpful visualization tools involve labeling the surfaces. Generally, if we do this, this can help us expedite auxiliary views. Label different vertices. List the nearest vertex at each location. Generally, whenever we're doing this, you notice that I referenced a whole lot of the vertices by different letters. If we do that, whenever we're creating an auxiliary view, that can give us some perspective. Use construction lines to determine locations, and remember that Equal number of sides, meaning a surface with three sides, will have three sides in every view. Parallel edges. If lines are parallel in one view, they will be parallel in every view. There's a practice problem that you can use in your Blackboard account. Additionally, there's other homework assignments that you can view relating auxiliary views.